Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit shorter, and it's a tag film. Um, I have not filmed this look, but if you want me to, let me know in the description, and I will do. Uh, just to let you know what I am wearing, I'm using the Oh My Glitter Winter Wonderland palette on my eyes. Um, butter bronzer, tart exposed on my cheeks. Tried out this new Revolution Glass Mirror highlighter. It's subtle uh, and on my lips I've got Charlotte Tilbury stoned rose which is one of the ones that was sent to me by my lovely friend Hedda who has now said she doesn't mind me mentioning her name on screen which is why I first mentioned it right um, the foundation I'm using is actually off of my shit list that I don't talk about anymore um, but I bought the foundation so I'm just going to use it up on times when I'm only going to be filming and then taking it back off again and it's Vanilla 120B if you're wondering what shade I am let's say about that one the better right this is a collaboration between myself and my beautiful friend Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977. Now, I saw a collab between Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips and Georgia Harris. They are the half cousins, as they call themselves. They do the Half Cousins podcast. Um, and they did um, a film together where they each designed half of a palette and I thought that sounded like a lot of fun so I sent the films to Nona and said hey look do you fancy having a go at this she was up for it hence we have the film so don't quite know why I'm waving my hands around quite like this but you're moved off to one side so I can put some pictures here and then hopefully we'll be able to get through this film in a reasonable amount of time so grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up And enjoy. I got my drink in a skull mug. Silicon before the environmentalists come for me. Right, so Georgia and Lacey's film was based off of the fact that um, Lacey has the original Better Together palette which was done by um, Kat Von D and, or Kat Von Disease as I now refer to her and Too Faced funnily enough both of those brands are on my shit list hmm so glad I don't actually have the palette but for those of you who don't know what on earth I'm talking about here's a picture so basically Cat designed one half, Too Faced designed the other half. At the time, they were both reasonably unproblematic brands. Um, and they each did a bit of blurb on the inside about how much they loved one another and they weren't rivals at all in makeup. And, and they thoroughly, thoroughly admired each other's business ethics, etc., etc., etc. Um, 
the two halves that form the heart actually separate and they're magnetic. So Lacey, bless her, every time, she said every time it comes up to a declutter, she's like, I really only want the Kat Von D half because the two-faced half is just usual crappy two-faced. They do these colours every Christmas and it's always worse quality than their usual stuff, which just recently hasn't been that good anyway. But she can't throw half of it away. She wants to keep it whole because it just... I completely understand because I would feel exactly the same. <laughs> so that is why she still has both halves of it. Um, she, like myself, or I, like her, no longer feature Kat Von D, or Kat Von Disease, or Kat Von Diphtheria on her channel, but she uses it off camera, which is what I do with. If I've got stuff that I bought, like the foundation that I'm using today, because um, I've also got Kat Von Diseases foundation over there as well. Um, I've got some uh, Kat Von Disease palettes. So I use them off camera in my personal life. I don't put them on screen, I don't talk about them. Um, once I'm absolutely 100% happy that Kat no longer receives any money since she's sold all of her shares to Kendo, I may feature some of her stuff on my channel again, but I need to make sure she's definitely not getting any kickback first. So, when they sold this set, it also came with a Better Than Sex mascara. Oh yeah, nail, nail down, by the way, in case. <sighs> I basically nearly passed out with pain getting into the car one day when I was on my own. Um, and uh, when I grabbed the car to stop myself from falling, <sighs> the nail went. Which is really annoying because if you look at the back of my nails, my natural nails are actually this length. They've just got acrylic on the top. So now I'm going to have to have a tip put on this one until my one grows back out again. I know I'm very expressive with my hands. You probably, if you hadn't noticed it before, you would do at some point. And I don't want a million questions as to why I have a nail down. I will get it fixed as soon as I can get into my nail girl. Uh, that sounds so wrong. Anyway. It, used to go, it was sold with a Better Than Sex mascara and a tattoo liner, which were two of their best selling lines at the time. So, Georgia and Lacey did their halves of the palette, and what they actually did was they pulled out shades they already had in their collection. What I wanted to do was do shades that maybe I haven't got. And this is why I want them. Um, the reason that I asked Nona out of everybody to collab with me is that I knew that my half of the palette would be cool toned because I love cool toned shadows. Hasina 2 from Blush Tribe is my absolute favourite palette. It is me in a palette. Um, but Everyone knows my favourite shades are purple, blues and greens. I mean, look at the eyes today. I mean, and they are the most difficult colours to create, typically, because I'm an awkward bitch. Um, and I knew that Nona prefers warmer tones, so I thought... I knew she'd probably have more neutrally type colours in hers, although she has been stepping into colour lately. So I'm hoping we're going to get on Nona's side a good mixture of neutrals and warm tones and shimmers and mattes. But what I wanted to do with mine was I wanted all matte shades because it's very very difficult to find good mattes in those three colours so I wanted my side to be cool 
toned, I wanted it to be my favourite colours, and I wanted it to be all matte. So, before I show you my palette, I'm going to show you the cover that I designed. Because, yes, I'm that kind of... I worked for a print and design company for three years. I mean, come on, I like fiddling with artwork. Nine times out of ten, if I'm in a group collab, I'll design the thumbnail and say, does anybody else want to use this? Um, I did it when we did the um, tribute to Nana's Dog Mojo. I did it for um, Anya's surprise birthday. <laughs> so, this is the cover that I designed. Again, I have absolutely no idea if Nona is going to be featuring oranges, reds and pinks. But I just liked that kind of smoke design. And of course we're going to call it Better Together, because that's what the original one was. Our photos on it, and our channel names at the bottom. So, taking you out of the suspense completely. This is what I would do for my half of the palette. So, the top row are all the purples so starting off with a nice lavender which would be great for a crease colour or a transition shade and then amethyst to deepen it up or magenta to deepen it up whichever you prefer or you could just run amethyst through and then deepen up with magenta and then maybe stick lavender on the lid because bear in mind you can always put a highlighter on your lid if you want sparkle there's absolutely no reason in the world you can't add shimmer or glitter or highlight to either a matte tone or just your lid I mean I've, I've used ouch Jeffrey's Northern Lights quite a few times on my lids and it's worked really well. So the top row was my purpley shades and not the type of purple mattes that you would normally find. You normally find a lilac y matte which is more pinky because obviously the pink is easier to create than the blue element because red and blue make purple colour theory folks, getting it all today. So that was my top row, um, admittedly magenta has got quite a bit of red in it but again that's not a shade that you tend to find as a matte very often. The next row is my pure blues, so I've got a powder blue, the kind of colour of my kitchen wall, and then a sky blue and a true cornflower. And of course the blues and the lilac and the lavenders, so those first two rows will blend together perfectly. So you could go for lavender as your transition, you could deepen it up with cornflower and then stick powder blue on the lid, chuck a little bit of highlighter over the top, boom you, you're out the door, you're done. Um, and again, finding pale blues that actually have impact, not easy, not easy at all. Moving down to the third row, these are my blue but moving towards green. So we're thinking heading towards the bridesmaids colours, heading towards teal. So starting off with a beautiful turquoise which particularly on deeper skin tones will look amazing. I wanted to make sure that, I mean Eve, probably the only, the only shade in here really, or two shades that you might find difficult to use on deeper melanin skins are the two lightest blues. I think all the others have got enough depth of colour 
but you'll be able to build them up without them going too ashy. But I would absolutely want them tested out on melanin skin and if necessary would tweak the colour slightly so that it did work on people of colour as well as milk bottles like myself. Uh, and then moving on to Ocean which is a proper teal blue green. It's a stunningly deep, it's the kind of colour that if you put it next to a green it looks blue and if you put it next to a blue it looks green and that's exactly what I wanted because again that then ties in with the row above and the row below and you could actually use that with the purple row as well because there's not a lot of pink in the purple row and they're more blue based shades apart from magenta you would absolutely be able to use that with those tones too. Now I'm moving into the greens and I wanted a, a soft almost heathery green, the kind of green that you see um, up on the Yorkshire Moors in springtime that gorgeous moist looking green. I can't think of a different word to use and I know a lot of people don't like that word so I'm really sorry. But it's a, it's a proper, you can, you can picture little white spring lambs bouncing around in the field and the field being that colour, you know? That's exactly the sort of colour I wanted, a proper spring meadow green. And then moving on to the bottom row, this is where I wanted my green. So again, I wanted to start off with a light green which wasn't a yellow based green because the meadow green is a yellow based green and I've noticed that a lot of lighter greens either tend to be mint or yellow and I wanted something that wasn't sharp enough to be mint but wasn't warm enough to be a yellowy green. I wanted it kind of right in the middle, of a true green. Equal amounts of yellow and blue. So that's the shade that I came up with. Um, and then I basically wanted that shade but four times deeper. Which is what the next colour over is, which is the Sea Spray. And that again can be classed as a teal. Teal is a very subjective shade. So either ocean or sea spray could be classed as a teal because teal can be more blue, teal can be more green. Very much depends. And then to finish it off, I wanted a beautiful deep shade that you could use with any of the colors in here. So you could use it with the purples, you could use it with the blues, you could use it with the blue heading into green, all the greens, and I chose a deep British racing green, the sort of colour that you see antique British racing green race cars from like the 20s and 30s. Uh, you know, if you think a Morgan or a Jaguar or Jaguar, a Jaguar, I've been watching too many Americans recently starting to get their, their pronunciation but I wanted a proper deep deep green which would work with all of those shades so that is my side of the Better Together palette so now I'm going to be watching to see exactly what Nona has done for her side and see what they look like together because obviously at the moment the palette looks like this with mine on one side uh, question mark censored on the other side because to find out exactly what the complementing side of the palette looks like. Well, 
you're just going to have to go and visit Miss Nona and check out her channel. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, before you top over to see Nona, please double check you're still subscribed. I do still keep losing subscribers and then having people say to me, I was unsubscribed again. In fact, one of the girls that was in the Anya birthday collab said to me, I'd been unsubscribed from you. I have no idea why, but I fixed it again. Because it's not the first time it's happened to her, which is really frustrating, particularly when you're a smaller creator. Um, you know, I, I, I don't do this channel to become famous and make money, because clearly that's not happening anyway. I do this because I want to help people. Because... Okay, this one isn't maybe helping, this is just chatting about what I would do as my perfect, um, my half of a perfect palette. But my tutorials are designed to walk you through step by step, as if you were sitting opposite my kitchen table. I zoom right in, I do it at slow speed, and I walk you through every single stage. So that even if you're a complete beginner, you can keep up. And that's something that's missing on YouTube. Bigger channels don't like doing tutorials. So it's important for me that that is still out there. And I find it really frustrating that people who have liked my channel, because they want to learn the tutorials, are then getting just, you know, unsubscribed against their will. So please double check that you are still subscribed. Even if I'm in your news feed, I may not be on your subscribed list. And once you have done that and left me a comment on A, do you like my side of the palette? Would you have preferred to see some shimmers in there? Are you surprised at the colours I chose? Well, probably not if you've watched any of my films. And also, if you were doing this with me, what would your half of the palette be? What 12 shades would you choose for your side of the Better Together palette? And you've got a bit of a, a sneak preview because now that you've seen mine, you can make sure yours either matches or is the complete opposite. You could go completely warm with it or you're going to go too cool toned as well. Are you going to do all shimmer to counter my all matte? Let me know. I would really, really love to hear what you would choose to do if you were doing the other half of the palette. Then I'm going to need you to go over to the beautiful Miss Nona and let her know you've come from 4F Beauty. Subscribe to her if you haven't already. And drop her some friendliness and some love and attention, just as you always do for me. Um, and let her know too, how you would complete her side of the palette. Because obviously, I'm guessing it's not going to be anything like mine. So you may decide you wanted to do different colours to complement her palette. So, all that remains for me to say, my darlings, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.